This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, go I, had, I was talking how to, how to create the, the new key pair. All right. So if you can share your screen, I can guide you on that. You can do it right away. I'll give you the control and please share your, share your screen and you can try creating it now so I can help you in real time so that you at least complete that, that path. I'm making you presenter for now. So please accept the request and you can share your screen and I can guide you on how to do that. Yeah. So I'll give you any control. You can see my screen, right? Uh, not yet. Yeah, I can see it now. Um. Okay. Okay, log in with your account. Huh? And then see, uh, so you just want to create your key pair or you also want to create your EC2 instance? No, I started creating the, the EC2 instance, but, but I got stuck where I did, I, 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 I did not have a key pair. You know, All right, so I've been, I, I, I will guide you through that. Through that. So let's go to EC2 instance. Yeah, you have clicked on that already. So let's click on that, and I will tell you where exactly you can see that. So now just click on launch new instance. Okay, let the page come in. Yeah, launch instance. Click on that. Okay. And then choose choose any of the AMIs. So we won't be creating one, but I'll just tell you how to create a uh, key pair. So you just uh, choose any one of, ch select the first one. This one, right? Yeah, just do a select, click on that select, yeah. Uh, go for the next. So don't choose anything, just go with default. Go for next, configure instance. Yeah, again, add storage, next, next. Oh, uh, here also you can go to next. You can click on next. next. Okay, now before, uh, yeah, so as, let the page come in. Okay, now you click on review and launch. So we'll just cancel it for now, just click it, review and launch. Yeah, this is where I got stuck. Right, so at this point, click on launch. So it will ask you for confirmation. So click on launch, if you can do that. Yeah, so that, that's where it is. So you can see that uh, there is a Dropbox which says choose an existing key pair. Click on that Dropbox. Click on there, yeah. And click on create a new key pair. Do that, click on that. Okay. Yeah, and now you name it something. So any name uh, which you want to you know, create. So mainly you are naming your key pair here. As soon as you name it, you will be downloading that key pair. And there is a download button right next to it. So you can, so can see save it, on right? your... Yeah, so you have downloaded it. That means, oh yeah, you can save it any way you wish to. So from now on, whenever you will create any of the instances, in Ohio region, you would be using this key pair. Now you don't need to launch this instance. You can oh. cancel it right here because you'll be wasting your 10 GB. So you can just cancel it for now. But you have saved your key pair. And just remember that where you have saved it. Yeah. 
yeah so that's all so you have not created your instances of now but any of the instance if you have created or if you're creating in future you will be using this a key pair to connect it so this is a, this is a key pair right yeah this is the key pair so you can uh you can keep it on your desktop or you can also store it in your s3 if you would like to uh, that will be learning later so for now you just use it from your desktop or anywhere like anywhere in your drive okay okay all right so i'll take back the control so you're good with the key pair your key pair is ready and now you can work with it so okay i'll be just taking back the role Okay, and let me share it. Okay, so I'll just send a request if you can approve that. Huh? Yeah, so you would be getting a request because I made you presenter. So when I click on my screen, you would be getting a request. So you have to just say yes, and then I'll be getting back control. Um, I haven't got it yet. Um okay let me do one more time so i'm clicking on this so or feroz can you change it because i'm not organizer so if you can change me to back to presenter i'm not organizer right now you don't see a request at your end robert don't you see any of the requests which says I'm asking you for presentation role? I'll, I'll just take uh, it for us. He can do that. Um, I'm, I'm not able to. All right, I'll just ask for us. He is not there. Let me quickly call him. Uh, I'm just waiting for him to come back. I've just sent him a message and he should be here. I don't know why. My good meeting is not coming up. I don't know why. Oh. All right. Good. Right. So I'm back. Okay, so it's good. I've taken back the control and I'm good to share my screen. So the good thing is your key pair is fixed, so you can start with it. All right, so what we learned yesterday, so we went through EC2 instances and we created EC2 instances. And today what we will be learning, we will be learning about AMIs and we'll be creating, we'll be learning how to create AMIs from EC2 instances. And that AMI you can use later on to launch your ec2 instances so let's just see so we already have ec2 instances created and if you have created one you certainly will have one so we'll choose one of the ec2 instances which we have created and then we'll create an ami from it okay so let's say this is the one which we created yesterday so i'm going to create an ami out of it and how do i do that so when i go here i do a right click i click on images and i say create image now, whenever I do create image, it comes with some list of options. So let's see what we are doing. So we are doing a number of things today. So EC2 is already there. So create AMI from EC2, and that will be our own AMI, which we, we can save, preserve it for future use. It's like an image. So let me give it a name. So I'll say AMI or EC2 demo AMI so that I remember why it was created. AMI for EC2 
demo instance. And I say no reboot. That means when I create this, it doesn't have to reboot if I check on that, but I'm not doing that. Let it get rebooted. It doesn't matter. It's in shutdown stage. Now at this stage, because it's an AMI, it automatically takes all the storage details because it copies everything for you. Now, in case you want to add additional volumes, you can also do that. And that will be created as a part of your next EC2 instances, which you launch. But we are just creating for this machine. We will stick to that, considering we are creating uh, image of this particular machine. Okay, but before that, we have to do some changes. So how do I know that you know this is the same AMI? So let's start this machine first. And then we're gonna install a few softwares, and then we will notice the difference between them. So our machine name is EC2 demo. Let's copy that so that we can check that later on. So this is the machine EC2 instance created. That's what we are working with right now. And in the meantime, let me start my mobile system. So I should be ready with that. So basically, the purpose of, of the AMI is you want to extend an existing copy of an instant, right? Uh, yeah, you can actually create an image of exactly your operating system. So if your operating system, you have list of installed softwares, when you create an AMI, you get exact replica of this. So basic, mainly you create an AMI, because you have already worked with one of the operating system, you have installed a number of applications and software, and you want to retain it. So next time you want to create similar operating system with similar set of application and software stack. And that's why you create them, which you can use it for future EC2 instances. So if you need similar machines later on, you don't have to do those installation again, and your machine will be ready with all those pieces for future. And that's why it will be faster. So you're not going to the installation again and again. And we'll just see that. So let me get that. I think it should be running now. So I'll give you an example what we are going to do. So first we will do some validation on this machine. We will check the software available here or missing one. And then we will install. Okay, so when we install it, we will be next EC2 instance which we launch. We will get all the software we install on this machine, and we will be noticing that. So first time, this machine comes with nothing. There is there are no softwares, and we will see that. Okay, it's just taking some time to come up. In the meantime, let me start other machine as well. That one is taking a bit of a time. Okay, so this one is ready. No, but this one I don't want it. This is not our machine. This is something we created earlier. Our machine is one at the bottom. So this is what we want to run. And 
and let me start this as well for the time being so that we should be ready in case I need any more instances. Okay, so this is the public IP which I can use. Let's see if I can connect to it. If it's ready, no, not copied. Let me copy it from here. Yeah, and also remember that whenever you connect to E, these Linux machines, you have to use EC2 hyphen user. That's the username by default. You can also create your own users, but that's the user you would be using when you're connecting for the first time. Is that for, uh, okay. for, all, the, for all the instance? Yeah, for all the Linux instances which you create. For Windows, it's different. Oh, on that thought, I did remember we have to run the Windows one as well. So let me start that as well. This was pending from yesterday. So let me start it. It should be ready. And in the meantime, okay, so we are connected to one of the EC2 instance. Okay, so let's just see. We have some couple of things. So we are going to make some checks in this particular operating system. And we will see that those services are not available. And then we will make those services available. For example, let's run a few commands. So I'm going to run command, let's say X clock. Right, so it's not working. That what is that? Any system. Yeah, so this is uh, like one of the graphical tools. When you run it, uh, you will be getting a clock. So we'll be seeing it soon, as soon as we install it. So for now, I'm just noticing it and we are keeping a track of it. So I'm just copying it onto the notepad to make sure that the first time when you create your system, Red Hat, you won't have this in place. Okay, so that's the one piece which we have noted. Let's run a few more commands. So I'm going to run, let's say, Firefox. That's not working. So let me make a note of that as well. So maybe we don't have these commands, so these commands are not running. So I'm going to install it, and then I'll create an AMI out of it, and that using that AMI, I can create another EC2 instance. Okay. And what else, what else? So let me, yes, let me check for HTTP server. So how do I check? I can check for PS hyphen EF. Grab HTTP. So that service is not running. And why it's not running? Because service may not be available. I can check it. Service HTTPD status. So I can see that it says it is not found. Right. So I'm just doing it for these three. All right. Now, so, and I also noticed that X11 forwarding that is being disabled by default, that means it's not available. So mainly I don't have graphical user interface. So I don't have graphical tools on mine. So let me quickly install those one by one. So first thing I'll be doing is I will install packages. So I'll say sudo yum install and desktop tools so it's going to install these desktop tools for me so sudo yum does a command like to install desktop right yeah so that command uh, you can use for anything for example let's run one by one so i'm using this command yum install and i will install x clock okay let's just first run it for x clock okay let me fix this first so I'm getting this page. Let me quickly set it up. So I don't have to do right click and I can just do copy paste. So just this setting on mobile term. And I'm going to open a new terminal. So let me quickly start the new terminal. Right, this is my new terminal. All right, so I did see that. So Firefox is not there. I don't have xclock and I don't have HTTPD. So let's first fix it for xclock. So I'm going to install it first sudo yum install x clock and let's run it so it is downloading that package and that is being installed right so at least x clock command would be available it may not run but it will be available right so that means command works 
it says it can't open the display because display is not available. All right, so we have to set display. So I'm gonna install some packages for display and I'll say sudo yum install and I'll say x11. Okay, so uh, let me just do that. So it's just installing some set of packages and that's how we install it in Linux. So whenever we have to install it, if I'm on a Linux machine and I do have to remember which one, so I'm working on Red Hat. So it's yum install in case I'm working with Debian or you know some other tools and command would change. So in concept it's same, it will be just using app get, but uh, most of the Linux drivers they use yum install. And yum is a really nice command. It takes care of all the dependencies and it installs everything for you on its own. So yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. It's yum install. Oh, okay. I can just write it. Yeah, so it's called yum install is what we call them. All right. And let me open a new one and see if it has come. Right, so I see that x11 forwarding is unable. Let me run xclaw command again. And I can see that there is a small clock right here. Yeah, so we saw that. So first time it was not available when I ran it. So it was said command not found. And now when I run X clock, I can see this clock right here. So that's running, so it's good. So we have installed one of the packages. Let's just check for a few other commands. So there is something called Firefox, which I ran, it was not working. Right, so we're gonna install it for that as well. So Firefox not working, let's install it. So I'm gonna say sudo yum install Firefox. So it will be downloading its all, all the packages and then that command should be working. Okay, so it has got 53 packages about which it should be downloading, but that will be quick. Yeah, so that's where it is downloading Firefox one, which we can see that. Firefox 60, Enterprise 7, for the Enterprise 7 Linux. All right, so that's being done. Let's try running it. I'll say Firefox now because it's being installed. I know that. Right, and it does complain for some of the libraries. So I can just say, but it should be coming up, libgl. All right, so it has come. So yeah, that's your Firefox, which you can see. So you can, so mainly it has come. So your Firefox is ready. Okay. Let me, so mainly we got two databases, but in the meantime, let me just fix one of the errors, which I was seeing there. It says libgl, so I'm gonna install it. Okay, all right, let me run it one more time just to see if I'm getting the same error. Okay, so sudo yum install. Yum install lib. So I'm just running number of libraries which is gonna take some time. All right, so what I've done so far, so I have done this. I have installed Firefox, which I can see it's visible. And I have fixed my X clock. And then let me do one more thing. We will be installing HTTP server as well. Right, so I can run a few things here. Let me close this one. And I, I can just say Google. Right, so Google.
yeah so it's coming quite good so mainly i can see that now on my linux box i do have firefox running a browser which i can use it all right so we are good with that let's quickly install one more thing which is sudo yum install httpd right so i'm installing it and that's gonna install my httpd right and what, if i start what service is, what is that http for so that's your web server so mainly i'm installing apache apache web server okay so that's the one right so let's just see that so i'm going to the service httpd start Oh, all right, sorry, I'll have to use, use sudo for that because I'm running with root. So let me quickly do that. Yeah, so it started. Now, how do I check it? If I'll do PSEF grep HTTPD, I'm gonna see that. So I can see that now it is running. This is something which we saw earlier, it was not running. So that's being running, it's good. And where it runs, it runs on default port 80. So if I'm going to say wget, I think I have it now. So let's do one more thing. I don't have wget command as well. Let me make a note of that as well. So, so mainly, this is the first time, let's say, I've created my environment and I'm fixing issues. So the next time when I create it, I don't find these issues. So I'm installing that as well. sudo yum install wget. What is wget? So wget is a command using that you can query one of the web pages. So for example, in this case, if I do wget localhost, HTTP, and mainly you use it for one of the URLs. So you can download it using wget. So any of the softwares, if you want to download, you can use wget command for that. So localhost is what I'm saying. And then column 80. all right so it's forbidden uh and i know why so it's although it's running and how do i make sure that it's running i can check on net state so if i'll do net stat a and p and i'll say crap and then it will show me the port 80 i can crap port 80. so i can see that it is running but it says forbidden and why is that that's where our security groups comes into picture and I'm going to do that. So let's change our security group a bit. So what we are going to do, EC2 DMS security, we are going to change it a bit. How do we change it? So we go to security group, we go to inbound. Inbound is where I can see all of the rules. Now, by default, I just have SSH rules. So I'm going to add one more rule, which is for HTTP. So I'm going to use HTTP, which should be running on port 80 and i'll say save so i'm good right it's being done let's try one more time all right so it's a different error it's it's connecting 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 it's forbidden so there is one more thing i should do i p tables so there are some defaults which i'm going to do a clean up flush all right yeah so let me just check it on the screen so if i run what is the ip let me just hit the ip of that ec2 instances and i'll be getting a page for apache i should be getting a page for apache let's see if i get that so this is the ip and let's hit that yeah so this is the page which i'm getting so this is apache page which I get when I install it. Now I can use both the DNS, so I can either use DNS or IP. If I copy this as well, I'm going to get the same page. Copy, and let me just see that. So both of them, they are going to give me same page, right? So this is the page which I have got. So what I've done so far, so for this server, we have done a number of things. So we have done yum install, I'm not going to write all commands, but I'll just tell you run install. We did it for wget, httpd. Then we did it for xclock. And what else? 
we did Firefox, right? So let's just remember these for now. So these are some of the softwares which we get, and I can get Firefox, I can get a page using that. So this is what I should be getting in my next operating system. So that this is the functionality I have created for this operating system. Now, what I'm going to do is now, I, future in future i want the similar kind of operating system so i want operating system which should have all these already in place so i don't have to do it all the time i don't have to perform those installations and that's what is the topic for today so what i'm going to do is let's go we'll be going right clicking it and we will say image if you say launch more like this that means a copy of it so it's, it's going to create a replica but what I'm doing instead, I'm using an image. So I'm creating an image and I'm preserving that as an image. So let's save it. I'm giving it an image name. I'll say AMI EC2 demo image so that I remember. And here I would say AMI for TC2 demo. When, when you save it, where does it get saved? So it will be saved within your AMI. I'll just show you that. So once it is created, you have AMI, you see right here under images, it will be saved here. Uh -huh. okay. All right, and I'm also going to say no reboot. So yeah, let's not reboot it. And then I'm going to create image. So I'm not adding any additional storage. I'm just creating this image. So that image creation will take some time because it backs up your snapshot so we can see it right here snapshot and then this is the image right so this is the image it is creating which we just created it and this is a snapshot for that image so we had we can see that there are two things happening so first thing is image creation which is it's creating image and other thing is it is creating snapshot as well for that now you see that the first one is AMI right here, and snapshot is right here. So whenever you create AMI, it will be creating an AMI and snapshot as well. Now, AMI is something you can store it in your S3 instances, which we'll be learning later on. But do remember that whenever you create a snapshot, that is always chargeable, because snapshot is being charged. So in case you're not interested in, test it, create your AMI. As soon as your AMI is done, you have launched your instances, you can remove this snapshot. Okay. All right, so let's get it created. So whatever things which are being charged, I will inform you well in advance so that, that you're aware. Now there is one more thing which we'll be discussing for today. It's short one, but that's something you should know because now you have started working with this with your system. So this AMI and snapshot is in progress. Till that time, let's cover one more topic which is essential for this. So I'll take you to that one. So you have something called billing dashboard and that is something important and I tell people on third or fourth session. Why? Because from then on, they start actually working with the system. So you have to go to your billing dashboard. How do you go about it? Your name, wherever your account name shows up, click on that arrow. You have something called my billing dashboard. Click on that. Now, when you go to that, it exactly tell you, tells you how much resource you are utilizing and it shows you the amount. So for example, in my case, I will be charged $11.34. So for the October month, I, I, I have been charged this much amount. Right, so what are my charges? I can see that I've been charged for EC2 up to $9, so mainly the EC2. And then there is something for Route 53, KMS, S3, other services which I'm using. And if you want to see what you are eligible for, you can see it right here on your screen. So if you are using EBS, is it, what yeah. you're, is it what you have been charged for the month or yeah so that's on monthly basis yeah it's it's on the monthly basis so you can see it right here it shows current month to date so that means from october 1st till today these are the charges and when the month ends on 30 it will be a final amount and that something will be charged to me right but don't worry about that you won't be charged to that extent because i use quite a number of many other services which are being chargeable you know i do use them efficiently but still they are not free so i'll be getting charged for it but you'll be working with basics initially for first one or two weeks you won't be getting charged but for last uh, two weeks you would be getting few additional charges because there are some services which you, you will have to test it 
and while testing it it will give you some minimal charge so as soon as you're done with testing you can remove that so you won't be getting charged okay right. so let's just see some of the services which are free so what do you have as a part of your free tier so as a part of free tier you get something called storage so when you create ebs volume which we just saw so whenever you create ec2 instances by default it will create 10 gb of elastic block storage you also call them ebs now because it is 30 gb the maximum limit for a month and this limit is for a month so just remember that it's not for the whole year but just for a month so every month up to 30 gb ebs volume is free that means if you are just using default configuration you can create up to three instances for free in my case you can see that i have created three maybe already i have created three so 30 out of 30 is being utilized so i'm i have used 30 100 percent already in case i create another one it's just gonna go a little up so i won't be getting charged until i'm here but if i just go beyond that i will be getting some charges for it because i'm utilizing 10 gb which was not part of free tier okay so that's one thing another thing is simple storage which is s3 that is our next topic when we'll be discuss about storage so up to 5 gb in s3 is free if we are doing beyond 5 gb then you'll be charged in my case i have utilized just 5 gb so far all right now again in terms of ec2 it's really good because ec2 is actually the instance which you run so if you're running something you know up to 750 hours you are free so any t2 dot micro instance you can run it for the whole month as well if you want to and you won't be getting charged for it because the whole month uh, 20 even running for 24 hours it go, won't pass beyond 750 but in case you have two instances two or more which you want to run for 24 hours a day and for 30 days then definitely it'll be charged so you can make use of it and i would suggest you you use those services this only when you are running it not beyond that so similarly any ec2 instances you can run for that amount of time okay so let's go back and these are nothing but your input output requests so that's anyway you can never cross it because they are in like millions so you you cannot cross those many stuff it will always be less than 10 percent in my case you can see that i oh. use up to 400 hours out of 750 so yeah but i'm still in the timeline i use it so much but i'm still 350 hours and I have just another couple of days, you know, maybe 13 more days for this. So that's your billing dashboard, which you can use to see your usage, calculate it. And then you can also perform settings. For example, when you have to go to bill, you have to pay bills. You can just go in here. You can check your bills. You know, what are the bills and for what all services they have charged you? Everything you would be able to check it right from here. More detailed view. So which you can see it for every month. And then you have cost explorer which tells you what are your costs based on you know monthly spending or link account or daily spending everything you would be able to see mainly you can visualize it so if you click on that it's going to give you a graphical interface a report kind of thing so that you can just see in reports what your usage were you know so this is how i have used maybe i've used very little in june while in july it was more others it was quite number of more again in september was less and october once october is done it's going to show it to me for october as well so yeah it gives you a graphical interface using which you would be able to see your reports you can create new reports or you can customize it as well okay and then so that's something you can set up and you can get it for different services which you use let me go back so it's all about your billing dashboard and it's like completely personal you will have your payment history your cash allocation, your reports, your budgets, consolidated billing. If you are using multiple accounts and you want to make payment for all of them, you can use that and you can set your preferences and credits as well if you have one. All right, so I think I had some credits, but that would have been utilized by now. Yeah, there was some credit earlier, so that's fine. AWS gave me some time back, so. All right, so that's about billing dashboard. Let's go back what we're working on. So yeah, right here. So image is available now. It was pending earlier, but now it is available. And so we can use this image for a number of things. So you can see that I have this image. I can say launch, I can say spot request, I can re-register it, I can register new AMI. I can also copy this AMI if I would like to, or I can change the permissions, right? Uh -huh. So if I have to, so what does it mean by changing permissions? So mainly 
if I make it public, that means anyone can access it so that I can provide you access as well. If it is private, that means you are the only one who is using it. Plus, you can share it with any accounts, which is part of your account. So you can certainly do that. All right, so where do I see that? In case I'm in my dashboard, and if I have to go and check my AMI, I can come to AMI and I would be able to see it. So that's my AMI. Okay, other reason is if I go to EC2, And let's click on launch. That's where you see it. So that's another place, right? So this is what we discussed in the last session. So whenever you create an AMI, that will be visible under my AMI. So now from here, it is just like an operating system. You have created an operating system. And if you create an operating system out of it, you will be able to get exactly what we have done. So when you create a new operating system, it will have all these commands running, up and running by default, because we have them installed and we have created using that AMI, all right? So I'll give, give that to you as an assignment so you should be able to follow it. It's not important that you do exactly the same thing, but you can test it with some other set of commands. So you can install some softwares, create AMI, and then launch one more instance using this AMI. And then the new instance will have all the softwares which you actually did for some other system. So yeah, that's the use. Right, so that's what we covered today. So it's that. So in quick start, you have pre-configured one. My MIs, if you have created something, AWS Marketplace is already, we have discussed, if you want to buy something from Marketplace. And community MIs, like the MIs which you have created, you know, that you can release it to public. When you release it to public, that becomes available for someone else to use as well. So yeah, you can do that as well. When it is private, it is only for you. When it is public, it is available for everyone. All right. And good thing about community MIs is you can also filter based on what kind of operating system you want. So those are the things you can do it. All right, so yeah, but do remember that. Uh, I'll just keep it till here today because this is one of the services, like I said, it's been chargeable. So you, you may get charged one or $2, all right? So make sure that as soon as you have done your testing uh, you have created an ec2 instance out of your ami you remove all the snapshots like i said snapshots are being chargeable so you'll be getting charged for your snapshots as soon as it is done remove your ami uh, or especially the snapshot because snapshots are being chargeable so remove your snapshot and then you are good okay all right so we will wrap up here so to and then from tomorrow on we'll be going a little faster because these are the prime services which we need to learn once we are good with this once we are uh, we know the components of ec2 tomorrow i'll be taking you through the rest of the components which are part of your ec2 and then we will also be discussing elb tomorrow which is your elastic load balancer so that will be topic tomorrow so we know how to create ec2 instances now uh, there is one more thing which i have to cover let me quickly do that yeah which we missed in the last session so that's about Windows machine. So nothing much, just I have to show you, which we couldn't do yesterday. So it should be available now. So when you connect this, this is how you get the password, right? So I have to copy my file first, which you have, which you have just learned to do it today. Your key pair file, once I do that, and I say decrypt password. So as soon as you do that, it will give me a password. Now, how do I connect? I'll go to my RDP, connect it, use the public DNS name. So I can use either public DNS name or I can also use the IP, any, any, anything which you prefer. I prefer IP sometimes because it's shorter. Okay, so what's the username? So I'm connecting now and it's gonna ask me for username and password. Username is right there which you can see on your screen and password is also visible on your screen. So I'll just connect it and show it to you that how do you log into your Windows machine if you've created one Windows machine in AWS. So, so it's really I have, useful. Uh, I have to have remote desktop on my system, right? Sorry, you have to have your desktop? Remote desktop. Yes, uh, so that will be available by default. In case it is not, uh, you don't necessarily need to install it and actually you don't have to install it you can just go and enable but 
in case you don't have privileges to do that, you can also do this. So you can go to download remote desktop file, which will download a software. And when you click on it, it will take you directly to that machine. So if I okay. click on that, it says, you know, go there, connect. If I'll say connect, it will just launch that and see. It's again asking me for the password. As soon as I put the password, it's going to it start another console, another window, which I'm already in. So yeah, that's my Windows one. And this is my machine, which I can see. Right. Uh -huh. All right. So that's we will keep it till here. So these two sessions, they are more like an introduction to EC2 and, and how to create your AMIs. And this is useful because using this in future, you would be able to create number of machines. You know, using one AMI, you can create any number of machines. Right. So tomorrow we will be discussing about ELB, which will be little detailed topic, and that's where we'll be learning load balancing. So we'll be little occupied. Uh, we'll be going through some of the instructions, and then we'll see how to do that. So we'll be discussing about EC2 and ELB. Once ELB is done, you know, a few other services within Compute Node we'll discuss, and then we'll move into storage. So all right. So all right. I think this should be good enough for now for practicing, and then let's connecting it in tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so you have created your key pair now. So I think you should be able to work with your system now. And if you have any issues, we'll uh, we'll work it out tomorrow. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good one.